Hey Scotty, I just finished cooking some beans and I'm ready to rewatch the Call of Trinity. You wanna join me? Ooh, that's much better. I guess some spaghetti western could wait a little bit. Why not? Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim unboxing videos, the series where Scotty and I take the time to unbox products and read out the cards while letting you know how good they are and if the product is truly worth your time and money. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back and relax as we dive into this unboxing. I am your host Vlad, this is Scotty and today we are taking our first steps into Outlaws of Thunder Junction. We're having a look at the Play Booster Box. So thank you very much Scotty for this introduction and if you're new here, Usually what we do is we read out the cards, take our time and just give our opinion on the whole set as a whole. And yeah, just um, enjoy the art and the expansion in general. There are 36 play boosters in here and we will start digging through. If you are interested in buying or selling any of these cards, we have our own card marketplace here in the UK, which is UK exclusive. So you'll be able to find and trade any and all of these cards, though we do not actually sell our cards on the website at all. Here we do have a little bit of a leaflet about this wonderful product. So you can see the coolest cards. I think this is just in general to show you all the different kind of versions that you can get. And here you have the different tar draft archetypes because of course now draft boosters and set boosters have been <clears throat> placed all into one big, big, big pack, which is the play boosters. It's just a way of going back into what they had done with Throne of Eldraine initially, which is mix up and not divide the need for collector collectability and also drafting. So here we go. We'll dive in straight into the set. Of course, we are a little bit late, but we have been working hard at our marketplace. So that's it. why we, some of our videos have been delayed quite significantly. But without further ado, here we have Holy Cow, a 2-2 Flyer, Flasher, Ox Angel, then when it enters the battlefield, you gain two life and scry one. Quite decent for drafting. Harrier Strix is a 1-1 one, one that costs one. It's flying and enters the battlefield it taps it permanent and then for three draw cards scar card good in the long run on a limited format so that could be quite decent and quite annoying and it's also a flyer desperate blood seekers a 2-2 two -two that costs two life linker that's already good and when it answers battlefield target player mills two cards very annoying um yeah just a life linker 2-2 two -two for two that's always good hard bristle bandit is a 1-1 one -one plant rogue cost to tap to have one mana of any color whenever you commit a crime you untap it and um, this ability triggers only once per turn which is really good for ram and of course now you commit a crime by targeting opponents anything they control and or cards in their graves is a crime so basically you can do a lot in this set even lands that we will see have the ability to target your opponents and that is a cool cool gimmick i wonder if they're going to keep this and make it an evergreen ward in general then we have Condit pylons it's a desert that allows you to sit through your mana and have one mana of any color so it's a, a little bit of a fixer and says battlefield survey once not too bad Jin of fool's falls a 4-3 gen that costs five flying plot 4-4 four, four. i really love this plot mechanic it is quite interesting in a limited set. I will say that I've played a little bit of drafting and it's quite, quite cool. Uh, you can set up the game and despite the fact that the opponents will know what you're going to be playing next, they don't know when you're going to be playing it. And it also removes it from most of the time from removal, because if you're timing it correctly when they're typed out, it can be quite, quite a good way of doing things. So uh, yeah. yeah. A bit of an expensive card otherwise for this one. Then we have Neutralized Guards. It's an instant and it costs three. Creatures target opponent controls get minus one, minus one until the end of the turn and you get to surveil two. Good cyborg card and a best of three, probably. Fleeing Reflections, an instant cost two. That creature control gains Hexproof until the end of the turn and untap that creature until the end of the turn and becomes a copy of up to one target creature. It's good for the Hexproof. It, they could see it coming and might prepare for it. And the second part is very situation. Hell's Blow Brute is a 5-4 mercenary, so it's an outlaw, has affinity for outlaws. So assassin, mercenary, priorities, rogues, and warlocks are all outlaws. And it's a uh, not tribe now, I don't remember. Uh, kindred, I don't know what the, the new uh, word for tribal is, but yep. And it has trample. 
can be annoying in the right deck quite strong as well blood hustler is a one one for two whenever you commit a crime you put a plus one plus one counter on it and it appeal did ability triggers only once then for four that get opponent loses a life and you gain a life in the long run this could be really really good in the right deck it can grow to be significantly annoying oh duelist of the mind so this is nathan stewart's world championship winner card as he was the world champion and he won and they made the car for him. And um, yeah, this is a very interesting one. It costs two, it has star three power and toughness and has flying vigilance, which is insanely good. And then its power is equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. And whenever you commit a crime, you draw a card. If you do discard a card and disability triggers only once this turn, don't get bummed out by the fact that it only happens once this turn because the fact that you can keep drawing for so many other reasons in so many other formats can actually make or break things so i like this card i think it's quite good then we have the first of the news showcase cards journey to nowhere which in limited is quite a good way to exile the target creature and until this is in play so this is quite annoying for limited and decent then we have jolene Plundering Pugilist is a 4-2 human mercenary that's gruel whenever you attack with one or more. Oh, so it's a power matters creature for or greater. Great, you get to create a treasure token so that you can do that several times, but it's only once per turn if you have because it doesn't count for each creature, it's just however many times you attack per turn. And I'm saying that because there are cards that allow you to have two more than one combat phase. And then for two, you sacrifice the treasure and then it deals one damage to any target. Eh, that's not bad. For sure, it can trade down easily, but it can also help you ramp up. Um, yeah, in the right deck, could be annoying, and that's a foil. And then we have a Swampy Swamp and an Arena token. So, yeah, it has been an interesting expansion so far. I must say that it's looking like you can have a lot of variety in this format regarding draft. And also the cards that they've reprinted, some of them are insanely good. And look at the mana drain as well. Um, yeah, just overall, the value in this set, I think, is much better better than unfortunately murders a carlo manor mine raider is a three two human rogue cost three it has trample and answers battlefield if you control another outlaw you get to create a treasure token and the right deck could be good it does give you two and it has trample why not outlaw medic is a one three human rogue life linker whenever it dies draw a card and it could be good for those early games for sure then we have peerless rope masters a four four cost five when it's battlefield return up to one target top creature to its own sand a very situational card not that great rooftop assassin is a two two vampire assassin cost four flash flying life linker as is battlefield destroy target creature and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn I've seen this turn around in drafts and in limited and overall just turn around games it can be really really annoying and not just for the destroy part but also because it's a flying life linker so it can really really just rack up the damage and also the life tumbleweed rising cost two sorcery create an xx green elemental creature token where X is the greatest power among creatures you control, and then you can plot it very, very nasty in the right deck. I it was played against me, it created an 8 8. So, yeah, Corrupted Conviction. It's an instant, and as an initial cost to cast this spell, draw, sacrifice a creature, you get to draw two cards. It's okay, not a great Phantom Interface. It's one of the spree cards. I really love the spree cards, not just in limited, in general. I think they add so much value, and just overall, hey, if you want to do this, then you can do this, or if you want to do more, Here's your choice and a card that allows you to do that. And that is so great. And this here is really annoying. First, you can counter attack a spell unless it's control pays two. So it's a quench. Um, and then you create a 2-2 two -two white spear creature token with flying. Very good. Very, very good in the long term as well. Um, yeah, just overall, even situational. A low stitcher. Not a good card. It's a 1-4 human warlock. Cost four. I'm going to just battle for you. Get to create a 2-2 two -two blue and black zombie rogue creature token. And then put two plus one plus one counters on that token spell for each spell you've cast this turn other than the first so if you plot it you can put more and more counters on it it's quite good but you could just play more plotted creatures in that turn and then play for the cost and there you go then you have the value out of it then you have honest rutstein which i think that's kind of a lie it's a <laughs> three two human warlock 
And when it enters the battlefield, a return target creature card from graveyard to your hand and the creature spells you cast cost one less in air to cast. Very, very strong overall and limited. Aloe Alchemist has a 3 2 plant warlock trample. When it becomes plotted, target creature gets plus three plus two and gains trample until the end of turn, allowing you to just buff stuff for the, the, the cost. And I think that's not too bad, but it is quite situational. But you know, you, you get a two for one, so I think it's quite decent. Lila, undefeated slick shot. There's so many slick shots in this expansion. Of course, the flying red one um, is the most sought after at the moment. I wonder if they're gonna ban it or not. We'll see how it goes. Now, this is a 3 3 legendary creature. Human Rogue has prowess. And whenever you cast a multicolored instant sorcery spell from your hand, exile the spell instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves. And if you do, it becomes plotted. That is insanely, insanely good. I'm getting to cast those spells again. That is just nasty. Then we have the Tension Sphere from Prosperity. It's an Azure enchantment. When it's the Balfium Exile, non land permanent, not named this, and all other permanents with the same name as that permanent. And when it leaves the battlefield, return exile cards to the battlefield under its control. So it's just a prison. And uh, yeah, so it's not bad. Yeah, those are two prisons in one little box so far. Fail 40, it's an instant, it's foil. Return target, no land permanent to its owner's hand. If you control this, you get to surveil one. Quite, quite nasty. Can be quite good in the right deck. And then we have an island and a treasure token oh i like this treasure tokens that's quite quite good okay so as we approach the release of modern horizons 3 we're going to be very excited to be able to unbox those products that set is going to be the craziest craziest set i think of this year and i look forward to that dustborn and bloomborough funny enough I, this year i am really looking forward to all of these sets but modern horizons 3 i think is going to be uh breakthrough so uh, make sure to stick around <laughs> because we're going to be unboxing that stuff hopefully and um, we get discerning peddler is a 2-2 it costs two enters the battlefield you may discard a card if you do draw cards so you get to rummage it was good take up shield it's an instant put a plus one plus one counter on target creature gains laughing and instructable until the end of turn and could be decent hey it's an instant so the instant speed is always great razzle dazzler as a one two whenever you cast your second spell each turn you put a plus one plus one counter on it and it can't be blocked this burn this can can grow up to be quite significantly annoying. So you gotta be careful of that unlimited. Volt Planner is a 3-1 human rogue, enters the battlefield, target player draws a card and he loses a life. It's not bad. It can help to kill some bigger things, otherwise it trades down significantly. Cactarantra is a 6-5 that costs 6, and then this spell costs 1 generic elastic as if you could draw a desert, we're making it cost me 5. Reach and whenever it becomes a target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls you may draw a card quite 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 annoying and uh yeah it can can be hard to, hard to deal with if you don't have some proper removal mirage meza is a land desert enters the battlefield tapped as it enters you choose a color and you get to tap and add one mana of any of the shows of colors so that's is not a bad fixer at all lively dirge is another spree spell cost two plus one or two Search your library for a card, put it into your graveyard and shuffle, and then return up to two target creature cards with total mana value four or less in your graveyard to the battlefield. Could be decent in a reanimate deck. I don't know that it's that good in limited. Shifting Grift is a sorcery, spree, and it has three options exchange control of two target creatures, exchange control of two target artifacts, or exchange control of two target enchantments. Now, this is one of those spree spells that is a bit too situational for me, so I don't. A scrupulous contractor is a 3 2 human assassin. When it enters the battlefield, you may sack a creature. If you do, target player draws two cards and loses two life, so that could be beneficial for you, or um, just in general, you can draw the, the stuff as well. Why not? And uh, yeah, you can play it for three. Not bad, not bad at all. Could be good one of. Uh, next, we have find the highest cost for sorcery surveil three. If you have no cards in hand, then draw three cards and you get to play it for four. Eh, I mean, you know, draw three cards for four could be good and limited, um, but in general, it's not that uh, strong anywhere else. Marquisa, Dealer of Death. This is one of my favorite new commanders of the set. As a three, four human rogue, the cost Grixis, and uh, whenever you commit a crime, you may pay one generic. If you do, you look at the top 
two cards of your library, put one of them in your hand and the other into your graveyard. So this is a constant whenever you commit a crime and that is allows you to just go through your deck so quick. So that's a really nice one. Ooh, Fling makes a return. I love the style of these newspaper printings news. You know, um, it's it's cool that they show the act, you know, and propose it as a, who this has happened. So here's the photo of it. And yeah, I just overall, overall think that the feel of this set is quite flavorful and um, very akin to what I tend to like, more so than Murder's A Kind of Manor, unfortunately. So Fling is a classic, has an additional cost to cast a spell, you sack a creature and then the, it deals damage equal to the sack powers. Um, so it's not bad to any specific target. So that's really, really good. It can easily break a game and um, either win you the game. In general, you can play this also in certain decks in Constructed for sure. And then we have Hard Bristle Band in foil and then Festering Gulch. Okay, so Festering Gulch is one of those desert lands that we we're discussing. I will go through this one and then the other ones we go through because we don't go through in cards over and over. So it enters the battlefield tapped and when it enters the battlefield, it one damage to target an opponent and then it taps for any of the Golgari callers. And of course, this triggers crimes. So that's one good way to do that. And you can definitely prioritize taking these lands in draft should you want to because they are quite good enablers for a lot of things and there's quite a lot of fixing for that. Then we have Quilt Chargers, a 4-3 Porcupine Mount. And whenever it attacks, saddle, it gets plus one plus two and gains mana until the end of turn saddles only for two. Quite annoying in the right deck. Inventive Wingsmith, 2-4 at the beginning of your end step if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn. And Inventive doesn't have a flying counter on it, but a flying counter on it. So it becomes flying 2-4, can be quite annoying and quite annoying also to kill. So that's something that might be uh, interesting for a lot of people that we have jailbreaker scheme as a sorcery that is a spree and for three extra you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and can't be blocked and then for two target creature or artifact um gets put into its owner's library top or bottom of the library and the owner decides that um yeah again another cool spree card that's decent limited deserves to do another good one it's an instant target creature gets minus two minus two until the end of turn and gets an additional minus one minus one until the end of turn if you control a desert so quite quite good in this one and limited and then we have drover grizzly there's a four two all attacks while saddled creatures you control gain trample until the end of turn well that can be significantly annoying in a power matters deck or in green overall ankle biter this is a great gray low card is a 1-1 one, one green death toucher that can remove a lot of annoying things so that is a great card then we have free strider commando is a 3-3 three, three. center mercenary and it enters battlefield it does so with two plus one plus one counters on it if it wasn't cast and no mana was spent to cast it so then you plot it and it becomes 5-5 five, five. can be really annoying and if you can give it trample and all that it can be hard to deal with brimstone roundup and this uh, allows you to create a 1-1 one, one red mercenary creature whenever you cast your second spell each turn you can plot it not that great and limited and is very situational so you might fall behind really quickly if you're holding your breath for this one stubborn borrow fiend has a 2-2 badger beast mount whenever it becomes saddled for the first time each turn mill two cards then it gets plus x plus x until the end of turn where x is the number of creature cards in your graveyard which can grow up to be significantly strong um but it's not one of the better saddle mounts and then we have wrangler of the damned as a human soldier is one fourth has flash and at the beginning of your step if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn you get to create a two two white spirit creature token for flying this can break games so so easily it is very dangerous and it can just ramp up to be quite quite significant next up we have our first mythic this is garrett mirror of the wilds is a three three that costs three and um, it's a uh, has haste and um, non-token creatures you control have tap create a token that's a copy of target token you control that enter the battlefield turn so this really revolves around tokens really fun in the right deck uh, of course this is a commander card so keep that in mind but yeah oh that's a mythic so let's put it there and then we have clear shine costs three it's an instant target creature you control gets plus one plus one to the end of turn and then deals damage equal to its power to target creature you do not control so again a great one and uh oh another rare this is a foil one this is annie joins up well, that's nice 
And this is Naya, just like Garrett, and it's a legendary enchantment, and when it enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. If a triggered ability of a legendary creature control triggers that ability, triggers an additional time. The first part can be okay if in limited you don't have any ways to deal damage, but otherwise this card is very much a um, card that is more for commander than anything else and ooh, that's nice that's a very cool cool art this is vanishing verse very very nice very very cool and then we got a points that's a nice art card yeah i'm a sucker for art cards i think the talent behind the artists that make each set is incredible it's quite quite incredible they put their heart and soul into it dead idealist one three human assassin with reach for one generic and tap it deals one damage to target opponent and enabling those crimes Sterling suppliers a 3 4 flyer and it's this battlefield you put a plus one plus one kind of non other target creature you control very strong one off um this one really does enable so it could be good in the right deck um geyser drake two three flyer as long as you, it's not your turn spells you cast cost one generic last to cast so if you're playing a lot of control this could be decent but um it's very situational raven of fell omens the one two flyer when you commit a crime each opponent loses a life you gain a life this ability once he's turned but still very annoying as a fly is a one two not a one one and uh, yeah quite quite annoying and a good card i believe then in limited sterling keykeeper this is a two two human mercenary for two you tap target non-man creature very situational and not so strong in limited i believe but it is a two two for two and the problem is that yeah there are so many good two two full steam a hand sorcery until the end of turn each creature you control gets plus plus two gains trample and this creature can be blocked by more than one creature very very good alpha strike in the right deck hollow marauder another great creature this is a specter rogue that costs seven but it costs one generic last to cast for each creature card in your graveyard and then the flying and it enters the battlefield any number of target opponents each discard a card for each of those opponents who didn't discard a card this with mana value four or greater you get to draw a card so in limited you get to draw at least one card if they discard incorrectly that is quite quite nice and i think it's a quite a good creature overall because of the flying uh, yes it can be easily killed but being in the air with a four two uh it's quite significantly strong then we have cunning coyote as a 2-2 haste and of course this is will coyote and uh the road runner and then you get both of them in the set i will say this set is so flavorful there are so many dad jokes and just so so many fun things that you can get it's incredible i think whoever created the flavor in this one sure deserves a raise <laughs> anyway next we have even interrupter this is a 2-2 flasher flying when it enters the battlefield you excel target spell it comes plotted and spells your opponent and cast from gravers or from exile cost two genetic more to cast this could be really really good and um just overall i mean the limit is, is really good but in maybe in pioneer as well it's it's a sideboardable card as well and it's just overall great um i think just being able to make those spells you know okay well it's kind of like a target i exile it for you and then just always oh, gonna cost two genetic more that's very very annoying so i like this card quite a lot and i think we will see some play in one way or another for it then we have obeka splitter of seconds which is insane with the court cards that were from the wilds of eldraine for the commander unique cards they could get in play boosters so those ones give you different upkeeps and this one is a two five coast grixis and one generic has menace and when it deals combat damage to a player you may get that many additional upkeep steps after this phase and with those cards it's just broken broken Ooh, okay next up we have a mythic and this is from the vault well uh big score cards what they call <laughs> i call it from the vault because it is from a vault as is esoteric duplicator so these are unique cards to this set they're on mythics and they're not reprints it's an artifact clue it costs three and when you sack it or another artifact you may pay two generic and if you do at the beginning of the next 10 step you create a token that's a copy of that artifact and then for two you sack it to draw a card because it's a clue as well i think this is really really strong in certain commander decks and just overall this could be a good card in uh, some more constructive format then we have back for more which is a return target creature card from graveyard to the battlefield when you do it fights up to one target creature you don't control and it has a six cost with Gogari, but the problem is that 
I mean, you're just gonna bring back a huge creature, hopefully kill another creature that can really swim back the game in your favor at the right moment. Then we have Shackle Slinger is a 3-2 human soldier. When he casts his second spell each turn, just like a creature and opponent controls. If it's that, put a sound counter on it and the West tap it. Very situational, not as good. And then we get a Bristling Backwards and a Mercenary Token. We'll see there are quite a few cards that create Mercenary Tokens. So that is always nice. And uh, next we have Bristleback Sentry. It's a 3-3 cost 2 defender. As long as you control a creature with power 4 or greater, it can attack as though it didn't have defender and you can really easily make it a 4-4 in one turn. Then we have Trick Shot. It's an instant, costs quite a lot, it's 5. Deals 6 damage to target creature and 2 damage to up to 1 target token, creature token. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit very situational. If you don't have any removal unlimited, maybe get it. Otherwise, you are better. Wanted Griffin is a 3-2 flyer. When it dies, you create the 1-1 one, one mercenary so it replaces itself it's a fly great card now we have fail fording again and boneyard desecrator a three four menace creature that costs four and for two second other creature put a plus one plus one on him if an outlaw will sack this way you get to create a treasure token very 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 good common i think in the right deck this can really sing now we have Quick draw. This is an instant target creature you control gets plus one plus one and first strike until the end of the turn. Creatures in a target opponent controls lose first strike and double strike until the end of the turn. Also, interesting and since it's an instant and costs only one, this could be a really good interaction. And we have this down aim big enough. This spell costs three generic elastic acid. If it targets a permanent you control, return up to two target no land permanents to their owner's hands. Situational not that great i believe caught in the crossfire it's a free instant and the first off deals two damage to each outlaw creature so that could be annoying uh for you because it's red and red does play quite a few outlaw creatures but in general it can be a decent board wipe and then for one it deals one damage to each non-outlaw creature so therefore you can decide and uh, yeah just overall board wipe if done correctly not bad then we have bucolic crunch it's a desert uh tap one generic tap one mana of any color spend and this mana only got some mount spell and then for three and tap look at the top card of your library if it's a mount card you may reveal it put it in your hand if you don't put it in your hand you may put it in the bottom of your library so this is just for those mount decks could be good in the right deck but overall otherwise you'll use it and then a rakish crew enchantment and enters the battlefield you get to create a 1-1 one, one red mercenary creature token and then whenever an outlaw you control dies each opponent loses life and you gain a life can be annoying in the long run it might be better used for other things though then we have calamity galloping inferno very very strong horse mount as the four six has haste and whenever it attacks while saddle which can only be saddled with one so that's not that much choose a non-legendary creature that saddled it this turn and you get to create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next 10 step and repeat this process once this can swing the game in your favor in such such a huge way it's such a good card and if it's not dealt with uh well it has to be <laughs> basically that's the gist of it and uh, yeah next we have decimate which makes a return destroy target artifact creature enchantment and land it's quite a nice little targeted removal for commander usually then we have a foil quilt charger and a foil crusoe heath and then we have a kellen joins up the art for it yep and we go on so far the unboxing hasn't been insane but we got to see quite a few cards and quite a lot of the mechanics we're almost done with the first half of the first third so yeah i hope you're sticking through i hope you are enjoying that drink and uh, let's continue on dance of the tumbleweeds sorcery and spree for the first one you search your library for a basic land card or a desert put it in your battlefield and shuffle and then for the second one you create an xx green elemental creature token where x is the number of lands you control very annoying in the uh, right deck and also it allows you to just overall go and fetch a land so that's always good for ramping iron fist pulverizers a four or five giant warrior cost five reach whenever you cast your second spell each turn it deals two damage to target opponent i will say that this uh, the, the ability of casting a second spell each turn is a bit restrictive i've tried playing is it and yeah of course it, it depends on, on the card pool that you get but it is one of the weaker ones because it's so 
um, dependent upon so many things happening and in the long run you tend to fall behind. Mystical Tether, uh, you may cast it as though it had flash if you pay two more to cast, it's an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you exile target artifact or creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. So in limited, that's a good removal. Take the fall, miss an instant, it's blue, cost one. Target creature gets minus one, minus zero until the end of turn, and it gets minus four, minus zero until the end of turn. If you control now, well, can be good for keeping one of your creatures alive. I will say though that um, otherwise it's annoying because it doesn't minus the toughness. Skull Dagger is an instant until the end of turn. Target creature you control gets plus one plus one and target creature opponent control gets minus one minus one. This I prefer over that of course. Slick Shot Vault Buster is a one four human rogue that has vigilance. And when you've committed a crime, it gets plus two plus zero once per turn and it's really annoying and it's overall can block your opponent in the first stages of the game bridal bighorn is a three four sheep mound cost four has vigilance when it attacks well sadly you get to create a one one white sheep creature token which is very nice in general <laughs> uh, for limited emergent haunting is an enchantment cost two at the beginning we are step if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn and if it isn't a creature it becomes a three three spirit creature while flying in addition to its other types this could be quite strong and it also allows it to surveil without tapping it so that's really strong in the long run scale stone summoner is a 3-3 human warlock cost 3 and when it attacks you get to create a 3-1 red dinosaur creature token if you control a creature with power 4 or greater so power matters deck this is an amazing amazing card slick shot lock picker is a 2-3 human rogue cost 3 when it enters battlefield Target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until the end of turn. And the flashback cost is equal to its mana cost and you can plot it for three. This is insanely strong, of course. So this is a basically a discounted Snapcaster mage. Very strong. If you don't know that card, then, well, go look it up because this is very strong. And then we have three steps ahead, which is an instant. It has three and it has three options. Either counter target spell for three or we create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control or you draw two cards and discard a card or you can do any all combinations this is very very strong and as i said three spells are quite quite significantly strong overall then we have another one of the breaking news cards hindering light counter a spell that targets you or a permanent control you draw a card and then we have peerless rope master in the foil version and then ooh, a full art mountain Quite nice. I like how they did the symbols of the mana just overall in the outlines or in the planescape. It's really, really nice. Okay, on we go and on we continue. And of course, there are some really, really, really good hits in all the different kinds of subsets that you can get in here. So let's see if we can manage to hit some cards. Spinewoods Paladin is a 5-4 Trampler. When it's a battlefield game, three life, you can put it for only four. This can be really, really annoying and really strong. Thunder Salvo, it deals X damage to target creature where X is two, plus the number of other spell you cast this turn, and it's an instant. Could be a good damage spell in the right deck. Steer Clear, it's an instant. Deals two damage to target attacking blocking creature, or deals four damage to that creature instead if you control the mount as you cast the spell so this can be really annoying it's good because it's white so it's a way to deal damage in white and you have to kind of play around it if they keep a white open seize the secrets cost one generic last cast if you commit a crime this turn you get to draw two cards quite quite good in the right deck ambush jigapede this is a <laughs> really disgusting creature i'm sorry i don't like millipedes uh, it's a six two insect that has flash when it's a battlefield target creature and opponent controls gets minus two minus two and until the end of turn it can be good to kill something big but you're trading one for one realistically this one rodeo pyromancer is a three four human mercenary whenever you cast your first spell each turn you get to add two um two red that's really really strong really good in the right deck fake your own death Another interesting instant, until the end of turn, target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains when this creature dies, return to the battlefield tapped under its turn's control and you create a treasure token, allowing you to ramp up. They've done a few of these kind of iterations, can be really strong in the right deck. And in general, I would see them maybe huh, in some li in constructed decks and that might be a good instant. Then we have Red Rock Sentinel is a 2-4 Golem Defender and 
for two generic tap, sack a land, draw a card, and create a treasure token. It's okay in the long run. I think if you're flooding, this could be decent. But other than that, um, yeah, it's very situational. Then we have Deep Muck Desperado is a 2-4 Homerid Mercenary. Don't know that I've seen this type before. Whenever you commit a crime, each opponent mills three cards, and this ability triggers only once each turn. Eh, it's okay, it's not that great unless you have interaction with their graveyard. Ruthless Rawbringer is a 3-2 Vampire Assassin. When it enters the battlefield, you may sack another creature. When you do destroy target, non-land permanent. So yeah, that's you can trade one for one is a 3-2. Ooh, that's a Okay, Magda the Whore Master, that's a rare, is a 2 2 Dwarf Berserker that costs 2 whenever you commit a crime. Create a tap treasure token, this ability only triggers once, and then sack 3 tokens to create a 4 4 red scorpion dragon creature token with flying and haste and activate only as a sorcery. So, in the long run, in the right deck, this can be insanely, insanely good. And uh, in general, I wonder if you're going to be able to see this maybe in some flavorful decks. I like it. And uh, yeah, could be interesting. Heartless Pillage makes a return. Target opponent discards two cards and with raid, if you attack this turn, you create a treasure token. And then we got Servant of the Stingers, a 1-3 human warlock, death toucher. And whenever Servant of the Stinger deals combat damage to a player, and if you've committed a crime this turn, you may sack it. If you do search a lobby for a card and put it in your hand and shuffle. The fact that it's a 1-3 and death toucher is really, really annoying for your opponents. It, they have to play around it. And the fact that um the the fetch card you know the tutoring could be interesting for sure uh but i think they would rather it dies than give you that card so it's more likely a defensive card in general but it's not bad overall then we have lush oasis and a human cleric Ooh, that's nice i know which card they brought back with this one as was a wilds of the drain no throne of the drain card yeah I think it was that enchantment, right? That gave you a different types of humans at each upkeep or something like that. We'll see if we open it. Ooh, giant beaver. Ooh, nice beaver. That's a 4-4 four, four beaver mount that has vigilance and it attacks while saddled. You put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature that saddled it this turn and it saddles for three, making it bigger. In the right deck, this could be really annoying. Reckless Lackey is a 1-2 first striker and haster. 1-2 that for three, you sack it and you draw a card and create a treasure token so it replaces itself in the long run i think that's quite decent that color you have some early game and then in the late game is ramp and just overall draw so yeah that's good armored armadillo is a zero four it costs only one has ward one and it for four it gets plus x plus zero until the end of turn where x is toughness so in the long term if you had just kind of hit nothing turn four turn five this can be really really strong and in the short term as well it's just just a wall which is hard to get around daring thunder thief has a 4-4 turtle rogue flash enters the battlefield tapped ah eh, not so great enters the battlefield tapped black snack buzzard is a 2-1 flying bird and when it enters battlefield it does so with a plus one plus one counter on if a creature died this turn and you can plot it this is really really strong and if done correctly you're just waiting for the opportune moment and then you can start pecking at your opponent it's really annoying sterling hound is a three two that costs three generic and answers the battlefield you surveil two so that allows you to get three attack if you're flooding or stuff like that and it's a three two for three it's not that bad gold pan when it's the battlefield you create a treasure token and you can equip it to a creature to give it a plus one plus one only for one not bad they're better but it's not bad make your own luck sorcery look at the top three cards of your library you make sell a non-land card from among them if you do it becomes plotted put the rest into your hand now of course this is kind of a very situational thing every time so i don't know if you want to really rely upon something like that then we have the four second miner as a 2-2 that costs one black can't block skeleton wrong whenever you commit a crime you may pay one black if you do return it from graveyard to the battlefield and it's not even tapped so that can be really good card i think that even in constructive we might see play of this i really really like this card i think it's quite quite strong take for a ride sorcery take for a ride has flash as long as you've committed a crime this turn and then gain control of the target creature until the end of turn and tap that creature it gains haste until the end of turn so the usual take control and then try and kill it oh one of the lands inspiring vantage so this is one of the 
Fastlands that they have reprinted here. I really like this and I'm really happy to see them back. And then we have Path to Exile. Of course, it makes a return. It's a classic exile that creature. Very, very nice. And it's a rare in this one. Grant has been reprinted ad nauseum, but it's a rare here. Then we have a foil gold pan. So then we're seeing it again. Then we have a mountain and ooh, Oko. It's a full art Oko. That is a gorgeous one. Gorgeous one. I think that's Maganine Villeneuve. I'm not mistaken. Yep, that it is. Okay, cool. Oh, we're almost done with the first third. It'd be nice to see a, a, an Oko or a Jace. Jace has been reprinted and I think that's one of the better ones. Oh, Snakeskin Veil, I love this card. I think this is really good situationally, but uh, there's also some decks you can do in both Explorer, Pioneer, and a Standard that can use this, especially with the current setup that they've had. Um, so yeah, it puts a plus one, plus one counter on target creature control and gains hex proof. Always, always good, always, always strong. And we have Prickly Player as a two to plant mercenary when it is battlefield you create a 1-1 one, one red mercenary creature token and uh, yeah it's, it's okay there are better cards for this area it's lullaby sorcery or two destroy that creature you gain two life very situational and it's a sorcery so it's kind of slow if you get better it's better stop cold flash enchant artifact or creature when it is battlefield you tap the enchanted permanent and enchanted permanent loses all ability all abilities and does not untap during its controller untap step uh, it's quite quite nice i like that um yeah it's just a freeze basically you just put it under ice and that's it consuming ashes glowed removal and the set alongside murder it's an instant exile target creature if it had mana value three or less you get to surveil two so yeah very good and if you're playing that color absolutely get it in limited otlo's fury is an instant the three creatures you control get plus two plus zero until the end of turn if you control an otlo exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn you may play that card it could be okay as an alpha strike overall but in this color it can be quite slow then we have Tom Troller. So Tomb Troller is a 0-4 goal and it costs 2. And for 2 generic put target card from Graveyard on the bottom of your library, this is just bad. Um, it's not a little for the limit, I think, for constructing maybe some decks. Now, we, uh, there's, funny enough, and put it on the uh, bottom of your library, there is a legendary creature that I think is uh, either is it or blue that you can look at the top or, or something if you reach the last card or if you if you play you can play from the back side of um, of your deck so bottom up and with that kind of deck and also there was a win come with that I think um, that if you reach the last card you win the game um, in that kind of deck that'd be fun uh, but yeah sorry I, I don't remember the names of these cards <laughs> <laughs> I hope you apologize. Uh, my forgetfulness. Then we have Treasure Dredger as a 2 2 human rogue. Uh, for one generic and tap, pay one life, you create a treasure token. So that's quite annoying and allows you to eventually ramp. So yeah, it's not bad in the right deck. It's a 4-3 Shepherd of the Clouds, Pegasus, Flying Vigilance, when it enters battlefield, return target permanent card with mana value three or less from Graver to your hand. Return that card to the battlefield instead if you control a mount. Now, unfortunately, this is not a mount, but this in the right deck can be really strong and overall just annoying. Then we have Bruise Toro. Oh, I love this one. So this is a 4-3 human warrior, cost four, and it has Boris in a cost. Oxen you control have double strike, and whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you exile the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you get to create a 2-2 white ox creature token. Otherwise, you may pay, you may cast it until the end of your next turn. This is insanely strong, insanely, insanely strong. So I really like that. Ooh, another big score card, memory vessel. It's an artifact that costs five and tap exile it. Each player exiles the top seven cards of their library until they are next turn. Players may play cards they exile this way and they can't play cards from their hand. Activate only as a sorcery. Very situational, very gimmicky. I don't know that I like it, but hey, it's there. Then we have Fierce Retribution with Cleave and destroy target creature or attacking creature. That's a uh, removal, that's not bad, but the cleave cost is quite, quite significant. Then we have a foil figure on death, and then a mountain foil, full art, and then a clue token. Ooh, I love the art in this one. <laughs> Clean Lockwood, very, very nice. I love that one, very, very cool. All right, almost done with the first third. Hopefully we'll start speeding up as we see a lot of the cards through, and, and we will skip them. Patient Natural.
Naturalist. That is a 2-3 human scout. When it is a battlefield, you mill three cards, put a land card from among the mill cards in your hand. If you can't, you get to create a treasure token. Very, very good and also rampy. Explosive derailment. It's a spree instant. For the first one, it deals four damage to target creature or the second one, destroy target artifact and can be quite significantly annoying and i love it i love it love it love it then we have trained oranx is a 3-1 cat beast mount and when it attacks saddle it gains first strike until the end of turn and you get to describe one and all saddles for two quite quite annoying of course you'll want to saddle this every time otherwise it really trades down significantly but it could also train up trade up Raz dazzler vote plunder hey as we were saying stagecoach security in four or five human soldier and when it enters the battlefield creatures you control get plus one plus one and vigilance at the end of turn and you can plot it for four making it cost a little less kind of a little of alpha strike not the strongest but if you have a lot of weenies it could be annoying visage bandit is a 2-2 shapeshifter rogue you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature you control except that it's a shapeshifter rogue in addition to its other types and then you get to plot it for three so yeah it's a clone basically and it's not bad um it can be really really annoying because you get to copy the nicest creature that your opponents have sandstorm verge is another desert you tap that one generic and for three tap target creature can't block this turn activate only as a sorcery very very annoying actually and you don't have to sack it so this could be a win um or or lose kind of situation could make or break some some things i I do believe this is not bad at all um, as, a, as a card. And then we have Intrepid Stable Masters, the 2-2 Human Scout with Reach. Tap to add one green and then tap add two mana when you call her. Spend this mana only to cast some mount or vehicle spells. This is very strong in the right deck, but very strong overall. I really like it and it's a good ramper. So kudos for that. Marauding Sphinx is a 3-5 Sphinx Rogue with Flying Vigilance and War 2 for only a 5 cost. That's really, really good. And whenever you commit a crime serve veil too this ability triggers only once each turn this card is insane if you can buff it even more that's just gonna win you the game and we have ornery tumble wag which is a choo choo brush wag mount at the beginning of combat in turn you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature any target creature very good then whenever it attacks while saddled you just have saddle full too so it's not that hard double the number of plus one plus one counter on target creature that is insane very very good I like it. Then we have Decisive Denial, making a return. Very nice little one. You either make two creatures fight or you counter target non-creature spell unless it's control page three. So that's not bad. Then we have Raven of Fell Moments, foil and a foil on flats. Very, very cute. Very, very nice. Oh, and look, that's a sheep token. <laughs> it looks a little bit pissed off. I will say that. I would run away from that sheep any day. Okie dokie. Next up, the last of the first third as we continue on and plunder into the wilds and irascible wolverine is a 3-2 wolverine and this is battlefield excel the top card of your library until the end of turn you may play that card and then you can plot it for three eh, not bad allomenic harrier wasted gardener it's a 2-2 and when it enters the battlefield, gain two life. And then you tap to have one mana of any color. Very good, very good mana fixer and ramper. Very, very good. I like this. And uh, it doesn't even cost that much. Voracious Varmint is a 2 2 Vigilance Varmint. And for one, and sack it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. This could be really good in this deck and very situational. But overall, um, in this set, it could be really good. Then we have Slick Sequence. It costs two, it's an instant. It deals two damage to any target. And if you cast another spell, Spell this turn, you draw a card. Again, as I said, is it is a tough thing to to do because you don't have so much mana. Is it really wants you to have a lot of mana in that so you can cast constantly that second spell? And sometimes you just can't. So if you're if you're on curve, especially Rustler Rampage, it's a spree instant that on the first option untap all creatures target player controls and then a target creature gains double strike until the end of turn. That can be really really good. Then we have Lazav, Familiar Stranger, a 1-4 Shapeshifter that costs 3 with the mirror in the cost. And whenever you commit a crime, you get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Lazav. And then you may exile a card from a graveyard. If a creature card was exiled this way, you may have him become a copy of that card until the end of turn. And this ability triggers only once each turn. So that's really good. You can continuously cycle. And if you kill a really strong creature, this becomes a copy. This is insanely strong. Absolutely. Whoop. 
skipped ahead, did not mean to do that. Spine Woods Armadillo is a 7 7 Armadillo, cost 6, has reach, War 3, and for 2, discard it. Answer show library for a basic line card or a desert card, reveal it, and put it in your hand, and shuffling, gain 3 life. Very, very good cycling ability. I really like this one. And then we have another mythic, the Gold Vein Hydra. It's a 0 0 Hydra that costs X and 1 green. Vigilance, Trample, Haze. And when it enters battlefield, it does so with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And when it dies, you create a number of tap treasure tokens equals to its power. This is going to be scene play and very much a lot of commanded decks, but maybe perhaps some pioneer decks. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Either way, I really love this card and I think it's very, very strong. Then we have right down and sudden breaking news destroy target blocking creature. Creatures that were blocked by that creature, this combat gain trample at the end of the turn. And their situation not that great. Take the full foil and then a forest. And then, ooh, this is very nice. A sign ruthless lawbringer. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Okay, so we go on to the second half. Hopefully, we'll speed things up now that we've seen most of the cards. And uh, yeah, so let me know. Let me know how you like this expansion. I think this is quite quite a flavorful expansion. I really love the cards in here and the power level. I'm not gonna lie. Why significant in some of them? Murner's Surprise. A sorcery return up to one target creature card from graveyard to hand. Create a 1 1 red mercenary token. Not bad. Drove a grizzly. Charger. Holy cow! Uh, Peerless Rope Master. Overzealous Muscles. A 5 4 Ogre Mercenary. And whenever you commit a crime during your turn, Overzealous Muscles gains indestructible until the end of turn. If you play in the right deck, one off could be really, really annoying. We have Mobile Homestead. It's a 3 3 vehicle. And it has haste as long as you control a mount. And whenever it attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield tapped. Okay. <clears throat> that can be really, really, really strong. Um, then we have Rattleback Apothecary. is a 3-2 Gorgon Warlock. Costs 3, hands death touch. And whenever you commit a crime, target creature you control gains your choice of menace or lifelink until the end of turn. That is just broken. And limited, that is just so strong. Cactus Folk's Sure Shot is a 4-4 Plant Mercenary. Cost 4, it has reach and ward 2. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, other creatures you control with power 4 are greater gain trample and haste until the end of turn. So power matters, definitely annoying. Then we have Claim Jumper, the Rabbit Mercenary. It's a bunny. It's a 3-3 Vigilance Bunny. When it enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search the library for a planes card and then put it onto the battlefield tap. And if an opponent controls more lands than you, Repeat this process once, and if you search your library this way, you get to shuffle. So basically, you get to catch up quite, quite good in the right deck. I really like that. Then we have Skullcrack, of course, and it's an instant. Players can gain life this turn, and it damage cannot be prevented this turn, and it deals 3 damage to target creature or player. Not bad, not bad at all. Oh, Foil Forsaken Miner. I like that. A nice little card here. I like it quite a lot. And then we get Soured Springs, and ooh, that's beautiful. Archangel of tithes art beautiful beautiful art right there okie doke and uh yeah so many beautiful cards that we've seen today so many good cards as well rooftop assassin heart bristle the stranding peddler supplier oh lone shark oh, of course lone shark is here enters the battlefield if you cast two or more spells this turn you draw a card and it's a three four and it plots four four so yeah it's interesting you might not need to necessarily plot this one but if you do it's not bad and yeah it's it's it can be really good in the right deck and we have oh and of course yeah i, I the name i know <laughs> flex shot vault buster one four that we've seen before ankle biter Miriam Heard Whisperer, 3 2 Human Druid Legendary. As long as it's your turn, mounts and vehicles you control have hexproof, so very, very good. It's an uncommon, so you can build around it. And whenever a mount of vehicle you control attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it in the right deck. This is really strong. Bandit's Hole, whenever you commit a crime, put a loot counter on it. And this ability only triggers once each turn and tap to add one mana of any color and then for two tap remove two loot counters to draw a card could be good in the long run not bad at all if you have a slower game i think the format in limited is not as fast as other sets have been so like for excel would be one for example so it could be okay there frontier seekers a two one human scout when it enters battlefield look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal a mount creature card again mount cards or a playing card from among them put it into your hand put the rest on the bottom 
Obi library in a random order. So, yep, good amount deck. Ooh, Rush of Dread, which with Alcazots, actually, this just kills your opponent in one go. And here's why. Target opponent sacrifices half the creatures they control, run it up. So it's a spree spell. That's the first option. The second one, target opponent scuffs half the cards of their hand, run it up. Or target opponent loses half their life, run it up. And with Akazots, it if an opponent will lose a, any life, they lose twice as much. So it's a one shot, basically. A very, very good card in that combination. And just overall, great card in limited as well. Then we have Terminal Agony, destroy target creature, and it has madness. Um, don't know that you can play this so much. Sterling Hound Foil and Abraded Bluffs. Oh, and another one of the human rogues. Um, uh, well, I mean, that's a rogue. Another one of the humans, because that was a mercenary. The Rush of Dread is, is quite, quite a fun one. I like it. Okay, next up. Oh, that's a, a nice one. Plot. That's nice. Um, there's our due. Throw from the saddle. Target creature you control gets plus one plus one until the end of the turn. Put a plus one plus one counter on it. Instead, if it's a mount, then it deals damage equal to its power to target creature. Very good, no matter what. Even the right deck is a stronger. Reader. Pick up shield. Silver Deputy is a one two that costs two generic. When it enters the battlefield, you may search a library for a basic land card or desert. Reveal it, then shuffle it, put it on top. So that's very slow. Because uh, we have some that puts it in play and some that puts it in hand. So play is faster in hand, slower. This is glacial pace. And then for tap, target like creature you control gets plus one plus zero until the end of turn. Uh, let's see control. Had it been any creature, you could just prompt to have more crimes. But no, uh, this is just not the great creature for limited certainly keeper oh baron bertram Greywater. three four vampire noble whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control you get to create a one one black vampire rogue creature token with lifelink now this ability only triggers once so <clears throat> That's not bad. And then for two, sack another creature or artifact to draw a card. So this is a token matters deck. If you can manage to build it in a limit, that's not bad. Otherwise, yeah, just not that great. Next up, we have another one. It's Bovine Intervention. <laughs> the puns are real. Bovine Intervention is an instant destroy target artifact or creature. It's control gets a 2-2 white ox creature token. It could be good if you don't have any other removals. But there are better removals, and you're not going to be playing monocolored realistically in this limited. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Form a posse. Sorcery, you get to create X11 one, one red mercenary creatures. Eh, it's okay. Again, the token part, I think that's kind of the slower and not as significant parts of this set for me. It's not that great. Bonnie Paul, clear cutter. It's a 6 5 giant scout that costs 5. It's not too hard of a cast because at that point you can ramp into it. And then you has reach. And when it enters the battlefield, you create Bull, a legendary blue ox creature token with this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. And whenever you attack, draw a card, then you may put a land card from man or graveyard onto the battlefield. That is an insanely strong card for limited in general. So, wow, that is good. And it could be really, really, really fun commander as well. So <laughs> kudos for that one. And we have World Walker Helm, one of the score cards. It's an artifact cost three, it's blue. If you would create one or more artifact tokens, instead create those tokens plus an additional map token. So it, could, it, it does go in some commander decks for sure. And then for two taps, create a token that's a copy of target artifact token you control. There, there was the one with the Grimace, um, not Grimace, the Grimble, whatever it was, that guy that cared about how many tokens you have of a single name, it could create in a certain way. I think this would be along the lines of that. Then we have, ooh, Crackle with power, that's a mythic, and uh, yeah, it deals five times X damage to each of up to X targets. Uh, yeah, it could be really, really good in limited. And just overall, it's a cool reprint. Now we have the slick shot foil and then a swamp and another human warrior for that enchantment. So there you go. Uh, perhaps we'll see the enchantment. I think we've seen every single one of the humans it can spawn. I'm not sure if it's four or three, but I don't remember. You can tell me in the comments down below if we don't see it. Then we have Scheme, Nizumi Link Breaker. Uh, it's a one, one rat warlock, cost one. When it dies, it replaces itself. Quite annoying, quite good. I have to out Dead Eye. Vengeful Townsfolk, it's a three, three, cost three. Whenever one or more other creatures you control die, you get to put a plus one, plus one counters on it. It can slowly grow up to be something for sure. It's a shame that it's whenever one or more. It really depends on how you build your deck. It could be slow, could be good enough phantom interface quick draw shackle slinger luxurious locomotive is a 6-5 vehicle and whenever it attacks you create a treasure token for each creature that crewed at this turn and you can create for one and activate only once each turn 
Uh, okay, so you just get to create um, one treasure token at each turn. Man, eh, it's okay, not that great. But um, it does crew only one for one, so that's not bad at all for that part. You still gotta get there, but yeah, it's not bad. At knife point, it has an enchantment. As long as it's your turn, I'll lose your control, have first strike. Ooh, that could be really good in the right deck. Whenever you commit a crime, you get to create a mercenary. Wow, and then it rolls out. Magda again, that's nice. Then we have a humiliate, which is a sorcery token opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non land card from it. That player discards a, that card and put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature control. Not bad at all. It is annoying, I will say, that they've changed the um, the way that they represent the cost because it's really hard in draft situation for somebody who is like me who is very image driven to try and figure out what the colors are you have to double pass and sometimes you even forget um, so it can be quite annoying but other than that that's not bad let's have in foil and then we have a planes and a pest yay not bad at all. As you can see, the tokens, some of them are from the breaking news set. So they have its own subset of tokens. And that pass, for example, I think was a strict saven card that created this, but I'm not sure. Anyway, with Spring Splashers, the 2 1, whenever it attacks target creature defending player controls, gets minus or minus zero until the end of turn. It's okay, not bad. And the Blood Seeker, reach for the sky. It's an aura, has flash, and giant creature, it gets plus three, plus two, and reach. And if it's put into grave from battlefield, you draw a card. Not bad. It's a buff spell, it costs four though. Trick Shot, Inventive Windsmith, Free Strider, Rockus Entertainer. So this is a 2 2 Flame Bard. Are they trying to kill it? Is his music that bad? <laughs> I'm trying to understand here. So for one generic can tap it, you pull a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, then enter battlefield this turn. Oh, could significantly buff your side in the right way. Return the favor another spree instant. For the first option, you copy target instant spell, sorcery spell, activate ability, or trigger the ability. You may choose new targets for the copy and for another one. One, change to off the target of target spell or ability with a single target. Could be really nice. It's not bad at all. Our caster Green Blade is a one-two human mercenary. When it enters the battlefield, you search a library for basic land card or desert, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle, and it gets plus one plus one for each desert you control. In the right deck, it could be really annoying and allows you to ramp, quote unquote. Then we have Unfortunate Accident, it's a spree spell. For three, destroy target creature, and for one, you get to create a mercenary. Who Spire Rough Canal, yay, another one of those fast lands. I'm very happy to see them return. I really love them. And then we have a hypothesize. Draw two cards, then you may discard a non-land card, and when you do, it deals four damage to target creature. Again, is it prickly pear? Oh, forest. That's the first full art forest that we see. And then that's an armadillo. Savage mask. Okay, that's cool. Okie doke. Onwards and upwards, as we say. We're almost done with the first half of the second third. And as you can see, things are picking up. So we will start skipping the commons and we're straight to the uncommons. I've seen most of this stuff by now. Oh, or at Archway. When it's this battlefield, that's so tapped. And uh, when it enters battlefield, you return a land you control to its owner's hand. If it was another desert, you surveil one and it's an ancient tomb. That's no ban. Well, the mana is of an ancient tomb. That's not bad. I like this one. Nimble Brigand has a 1 3. Can't be blocked if you committed a crime this turn, which is really annoying and deals combat damage to a player. Draw a card. Strong, strong, strong. In the right deck. Balance Revival. Sorcery. Return up to one target creature card from graveyard to the battlefield. Return up to one target permanent card from graveyard to your hand. Wow, that is very strong. The Jumper makes a return. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to skip a hand. Then we have Dust Bowl as a rare. And uh, tap to have one generic and for three tap sack a land, destroy target non basic land. Then we have anguish to make it and foil exile target non land permanent. You lose three life. Very, very nice. I like the full version of this one. It's not bad. Roll the canyon and then a nice, beautiful full art card. Not bad. And as we pick up the speed, hopefully we'll be seeing more and more goodies. Betrayal at the Vault, this is a story point. Uh, story spot, I should say. It's an instant target creature you control deals damage equals to its power to each of two other target creatures. It could be really strong in the right box. Boom box, six tap sack, destroy up to one target artifact or creature and up to one target land. Um, oh no, it's not ore, so you can destroy all of that. It can be really good in the right deck uh, if you don't have any removal for sure. Prairie Dog, 
2 2 life linker. Uh, beginning of your end step, if you haven't cast a spell from hand, if you put a plus one plus one counter on it, and then for five until the end of turn, if you would put one or more plus one plus one counters on creature you control, you put that many plus one plus one plus one counters on it. Um, not bad. Ooh, tiny bones, the pickpocket. <laughs> I love this card. It's a one one skeleton rogue, costs one black, has death touch, and uh, it deals combat damage to a player. You may cast target non land permanent card from that player's graveyard and pay mana of any spell to cast that spell that is really really strong i love this card and it's a beautiful beautiful mythic and i just love tiny bones in general and we have a repulse a spring splasher an island and a meteorite token wow meteorite tokens what does it do when it enters the battlefield it deals two damage to any target Ooh, and i tap to have one mana of any color so you don't even have to sack it you just tap it not bad that's cool yeah, I'm really happy with Tiny Bones. I'm happy to see him. It's a good one. All right, so let's go on. Okay, sure, for the safe passage, enter the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it, plus an additional plus one, plus one counter for each other creature you control, and you can plot for two. Hmm. It could be okay, but it could also be very slow. Ferocification at the beginning of your combat on your turn. Here's one. Target creature you control gets plus two plus zero until the end of turn. Or target creature you control gives menace and haste until the end of turn. Very slow. There are better. Vile Smasher. Gleeful Grenadier. As a legendary creature goblin mercenary. So three, two. Whenever an outlaw enters the battlefield under control, Vile Smasher Gleeful Grenadier deals one damage to target opponent, enabling more and more crime so that's really good then we have doc orlock as a grizzled genius is a two three bear druid and uh yeah spells you cast from graveyard or from exile cost two generic less to cast and playing cards from your hands cost two less wow wow that's really really good next up we have insatiable avarice it's a sorcery spree First up, turn search a library for a card, then shuffle, put that card on top, on top, so that's significant. Then target player draws three cards and loses three life. It could be a decent spell. Oh, wow. That is a beautiful special guest. So that's the first special guest we see. It's a Prismatic Vista, reaping from the first Modern Horizon set. Very, very nice. I really love the art of this. And then we have Unlicensed Herders. Oh, that's nice. That's a good card. That's a very, very good card to have been reprinted. And uh, then we have Map, Frontier, and Festering Gulch. That was a great, great pack. That was a really good pack. We had quite a bit of fun stuff. Um, yeah, very nice. Okay, doke. Next up, what will we get? So far, that's been interesting. I will tell you that. I'm very happy with Tiny Bones. I was hoping to get it. And uh, yeah, it's been <laughs> really crazy. Okay, okay, let's go on. Let's see. We have Congregation Griff. So one for Hippogriff Mount, Flying Life Linker. Whenever it attacks, saddled, gets plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of mounts you control. And you can sell it for three in the right deck. Can be annoying. Rise of the Varmints. It's a sorcery. You create X to one green varmint creature tokens, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. And you plot it for three. Uh, situational. Prosperity Tycoon for two human noble. When it's the battlefield, you create a 1-1 one, one red mercenary creature token with tap. Target creature you control gets plus 1 plus 0 until the end of turn, of course. And then for two second token, and it gains indestructible until the end of turn and tap it. Eh, it's not bad. It's very situational, though. Sacking the token might not be so easy. You have to build around it, and it might not be the best. Free Strider Lookout, 3-3 three, three human rogue. Oh, Streeth has reach. Whenever you commit a crime, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tab and put the rest of the bottom of your library in random order. Wow. This ability triggers only once each turn. It's so good because you just put it in the battlefield tab. That is insanely strong. Ooh, Tyrant Scorn. Choose one. Destroy target creature mana value three or less or return target creature to its owner's hand. Very annoying little card. Stop cold foil planes and a copy. Wow, that's a psychedelic copy. That is a cool one. You've seen so many copies of copy <laughs> now, and that is a really psychedelic one. Hey, almost done with the second part, and then we'll continue on to the end. All right, so let's move on. Next, we have Bounding Felidar is a 4-7 Cat Beast mount. Saddles for two. When it attacks while saddle, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each other creature you control, and you gain one life for each of those creatures. That is insanely strong and a mount deck. Gold Rush, instant. Create a treasure token until the end of turn. After one target creature gets plus two, plus two for each treasure you control. This, if you 
situation you build around it, it can just make or break an uh, limited deck for sure. Intimidating campaign, great enchantment. When it's the battlefield, each opponent loses a life. It's each opponent, so it does not commit a crime. You gain a life, you draw a card. Then whenever you do commit a crime, you may return this to your hand. So yeah, it's not bad. Then we have Rakdos joins up, legendary enchantment. Cost five. When it's this battlefield, return target creature card from graveyard to the battlefield with a two additional plus one plus one counters on it. So that's very very strong. And whenever a creature you control dies, it deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. Very very strong and very very annoying. Um, yeah, just overall great. Then we have another rare, another round. X X and two generic and one white. Exile any number of creatures you control, then return them onto the battlefield under your own control. Control, then repeat this process x more times adds very much for etbs re-enabled now we have buried in the garden and chance to land and then says battlefield exile target no man permanent you don't control until this leaves the battlefield and then whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana it says controller as an additional mana of any color so that is a prison and also a ramp and all in one so that's not bad oh two foils vault plunder and a eroded canyon not bad not bad at all oh that is the new mana drain by the way of course that's not the card <laughs> it's just the art of it but that is the art of the new mana drain that's very very nice i wonder if we'll see it i'll be really happy if we get to see one of those uh, anyway very very cool i'm also excited for the collector's box because there are some really really cool things in the collector's pack so we are going to be opening one of those all right let's let's go on we are almost done with the with the second half second third sorry i should say the monic ruckus very good one i actually like this and i think it's in play in some constructed deck because uh, it's an enchantment that costs two and chance a creature it gives it plus one plus one and menace and trample so that's insane and then when it is put into graveyard from battlefield you draw a card and then you can play it for just one that is so so good and with a new slick shot wow that is strong and we have the servant of the singer a rambling possum it's a really good one too three three whenever it attacks while saddle it gets plus one plus two becoming a four five until the end of turn and then you may return any number of creatures that sell it on this turn onto the owner's hand so you remember you do settle as a sorcerer so you can't really do it defensively to to bring up a creature back to hand but that's really good lassoed by the law and enchantment and it says battlefield is a target no land permanent and opponent controls until it uh, leaves the battlefield and then you get to create that mercenary <laughs> smuggler surprise another good card that i think we'll see play and some decks and um, explorer and pioneer as an instant spree costs one and then plus two mill four cards you may put up to two creature card and or land cards from on them into your hand and then for an extra five you may put up to two creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield and then for an extra one creatures you control with power four greater games hexproof and disruptive only till the end of turn very very good card and because the spree cards are so situational they are, are just amazing and i love them <laughs> this is the Thornado. And it's not to be confused with a Sharknado. It destroys target creature with flying and you can cycle it. It's not bad. And the Canyon Crab. I like this one actually. It's a zero five that costs two. For two, it gets plus two minus two until the end of turn. So this is really good in the early games, especially if you're playing a slower game or more controlly game. And then at the beginning of your end step, if you haven't cast spell from your hand this turn, draw a card, then discard a card. Very, very, very strong. I really do like significantly. Okay, the last one of the second third. Okie doke. So we'll skip through the comments. All right, then we have Chrome. Violent Cacophony is a 2 3 zombie horror. It's, is it costs four flying? Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you put a plus one, plus one counter and draw a card. Now, this is the kind of card that if I see this, definitely I will pick it up. It's very good to build around. Long Horse Shub, Shooter, another great one. You plot it, it deals two damage to any target if you plot it. It has reach. And it is slow. It is slow, but it's can help you deal with some extra damage rectus robber is a 4-3 zombie rogue and costs four when it enters battlefield if a creature die this turn you create a 2-2 blue and black zombie creature token so you can plot it and then time it correctly that can be really annoying that we have pillage the bog very beautiful art that is really nice and i think that's cravex so it costs golgari it's a sorcery you look at the top x cards of your library where x is the twice the number of lands you control put one of them into your hand the rest of the bottom of the library in a random order you can plot it so it allows you to get through your 
uh, top of the library in, um, in a better way. Ooh, Ionize, counter a spell, and it deals two damage to target spell's controller. That's not bad at all. And it's good to see it return. Then the Bristol back for, and then a planes. Okie dokie. So to th speed things up now, oh, I love this spirit. Look at that beauty. So to th speed things up for this next third, I am going to just overall look at the rares because we've seen most of the commons, uh, I think almost all of them, and basically a lot of the uncommons. So we're just gonna speed up the last part and gonna go and go for the rares. Dust Animus is a two, three spirit creature that costs two, it's white, has flying, to control five or more untapped lands. It enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it and a lifelink counter on it, which is insanely, insanely strong and then you can plot it for two to make sure that you do have those lands it's very very strong and not just situationally it's just overall strong then we have sandstorm salvager from the big score it's a human artificer one one i cost three when it enters battlefield you create a three colorless golem artifact token so that creates well the power of four for three and then for two and tap you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control and they gain trample at the end of turn that is very very strong in general then you have journey to nowhere deserts do and bristling backwards and here we go here we go yeah, what should we get so far? It's been cool. I'm happy to see the Prismatic Vista. That's not a bad card in the end. And uh, yeah, so far we've seen quite a quite a beautiful set of cards. And um, I really enjoyed the mix of the subsets. It does make it harder for you to collect all the cards of a set. I will say that. But in the end, it's not that bad. And it gives you more variety. And especially because you can actually play with them in limited events. So anyway, we have Bristly Bill Spine. Sower is a 2 2 plan druid. It's a mythic, quite strong actually. It has landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under control. You put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and for five, double the number of plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. And this is quite strong. There are decks that I am, you know, with the new Nissa that landfall matters and that's just going to be really, really strong in those decks. And it's a nice mythic. Then back for more. And Miriam and a mountain and some treasure so yeah and that's kind of decks and just overall it's just a great creature i think it's very strong and i will definitely see some constructive play in one way or another okie dokie so on on more than hours obviously shoot the sheriff somebody shot the sheriff oh a cool the repentant as the rare of this pack five five legendary creature scorpion dragon rogue say that five times real quick flying trample sec other three creatures you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield and then activate only the sorcery only once each turn remember you in this colors you can create a lot of mercenary one ones and it's not too bad and it's a very very strong because it's a flying trample at five five even just a face value for four even though it's not the easiest cast cost it's still very very strong so unlimited keep that in mind fell the mighty cost five destroy all, all creatures with power grade and then target creature you control good war wipe always nice to see it come back and uh, i mean it's part of a lot a lot of commander decks throw the saddle and lonely arroyo and a beautiful bruise bruise card beautiful art beautiful okay and we're almost at the half of the last third of this unboxing and yeah we've seen a lot of mounts we've seen a lot of beautiful cards it's just just exciting just exciting and for all those kids out there that always wanted to become cowboy when they grew up and this is the set for you lava spur boots these are quite quite decent i think i've seen some constructive play of some of them not a lot of them and this is the road runner <laughs> for willy coyote that's very nice oh there you go we have one of the wanted posters of kervek the punisher this is a 3-3 three, three human Human warlock that costs three is black. And whenever you commit a crime, you exile up to one target black card from graveyard and copy it from your graveyard. And you may cast the copy. If you do, you lose two life. Very, very good card. And I really like this one. Then we have murder. Always great to see it reprinted. High noon as an enchantment costs two. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. And then for five, sack it, deals five damage to any target. It's a full rare, not that great in general, but you know, if you need it, <laughs> you got Got it. Our braided bluffs, the last one, and then a token card. Yeah, High Noon is, is one of those. I think it's maybe chromatic card for very specific decks, and it limits the play quite a lot, but I don't know that it's good for anything else, realistically. 
you can tell me in the comments down below if I've uh, made a mistake with that one, but so that's my thought. Anyway, then we have Outcaster Trailblazers, a 4-2 human druid that costs 3, 1 inches battlefield, add 1 mana of any color, so that's nice. And then whenever another creature with power 4 gray inches battlefield on your control, you draw a card. Wow, that's good. And then you plot it for 3. That that can be really strong. And then we have Skewer the Critics, a lovely reprint with Spectacle, it makes it cast only 1 if you're an opponent lost life this turn and then we have humiliate okay another great one target opponent reveals the hand we've already seen it before um i like this in foil i actually say that these in foil they're actually really really cute really really nice i, I do like that oh what breaking news is this fractured identity no that this is not breaking news uh or maybe it is really cool though and <clears throat> Yeah, very, very nice so far. And uh, almost done. We're almost there. Almost at the end. It's always nice to see an introduction of the set. Um, we try and go in blind as possible. But of course, being that the set has been out for quite a wee bit, uh, we've seen some of these cards already. So, oh, Botanical Sanctum makes a return. That's always nice. And uh, I really like these lines. I really think they're really cool. Oh, Harvester of Misery. Another big score card. It's a 5 4 spear that costs 5 menace whenever it ends the battle field other creatures get minus two minus two until the end of turn and for two discard it target creature gets minus two minus two until the end of turn very very nice and limited and overall an annoying creature and then the real mint and the island and a copy yeah i think that's a really nice creature in the limited i don't know that you will play too much of it in um many decks but there are some black commander decks that will love this card my um I don't know if I would play in my Yama deck because that's more of a sack deck, but yeah, it's so many cards in this. And just along the, uh, to this effect, I prefer the um, Massacre Girl, the original one, because that one just board wipes all together. But yeah, that's there. Why not? Okay, okay, let's move on. Ooh, Roxanne, the one that creates, you know, the Star of Savant creates the Meteorus, and it's a 4 3 that costs 5 with Gruel. And whenever it enters Battle of your attacks, you get to create a tap colors artifact token named Meteorite. So we saw it before when it enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to any target, and then you can tap it to add it for any color. And whenever you tap an artifact token for mana, so any of the Meteorites or treasures, have a mana of any type that artifact token produced. Ramp, ramp, ramp. So, so strong this card. I've seen some constructed play with this and it's very, very, very strong. Ooh, reanimate. Well, that's a nice pull right there. The reanimate makes a return and that is a beauty. I love that card. And then we have a full demonic rackets and a full art island and another beautiful art card. Yes, that was a great, great little pack. You have a reanimate and Roxanne. That's really nice. I think Roxanne is going to fetch a pretty price if they find a way to build it. If not, it's just overall a great commander card. Um, yeah. Ooh, the key to the vault. Okay, so this one is an interesting one. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player and you equip it for three, so it's overall five costs but between the cast and that. Um, it you look at that many cards on top of your library. So you deal five damage, you look at five cards from the top of your library. You may I excel a non-land card from one, then put the rest at the bottom of the library in a random order. You may cast the XL card without paying its mana cost. So very situational limited. Um, I think this is more of a commander card where you can most definitely hit the um, opponents in the face and then just play from there. Oh, Savage Smash, there you go. Target creature you control gets plus two plus two until the end of turn. If it's a target creature you don't control, very, very strong sorcery, a five spell. Very, very nice in general. And then we have Train Orange Spoil and Lush Oasis. And oh, beautiful, wow. Slick Sequence, that was a card that we saw before. Very, very beautiful art. Honestly, that is just gorgeous. The colors and the, and the signature, just beautiful. Okay, we only have four more packs and then we're done. So yeah, has been a crazy one. We've seen some great cards. I did not expect a reanime right there. So that's on par of really good cards right there. Atlas Fury, Neutralize, Strong Storm Verse. Oh, Malcolm, the eyes. Another key character for the story. This is a 2 2 Siren Pirate. And it's cost is it? It has Flying and Haste. And whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you get to investigate, creating those clue tokens. And then we have a Leyline Binding, of course. Very, very, very good card. Flash Domain. This spell costs one generic last to cast for each type, a first basic land type among uh, lands you control. And when it's the battlefield, exile attack and no land permanent opponent controls. This is great. It's a great card for the main decks overall, and it's always good to see it, and I just love it. And we have Irascible Wolverine in the forest. 
That was a good pack. I, I do like that pack uh, quite quite significantly. I think um, that Late Light Binding is worth quite a pretty penny still. And uh, yeah, that's nice to see. Okay, the third pack left. There you go. We got... All right, we have here the Gitrog uh, Mythic Ravenous Ride 6-5 Frog Horror Mount that costs five and it has Trample in Haste. I think this is one of the better um, mounts. And when it deals combat damage to a player, you may sack a creature that saddle it this turn. If you do, you draw X cards and put X land cards from hand onto the battlefield tap where X is a sacrifice creature power. And of course you can settle it for one. That's really, really, really strong. And just overall, just a great, great little mythic right there. And then we have clear shot target creature uh, that you control gets plus one, plus one, then deals damage. And then the Wolverine again, foil. Wow, <laughs> one after the other. All right, all right, two more packs to go. I am hoping that in all these unboxings that we will do, I will see a mana drain. That is my dream. <laughs> I would like to see one. I haven't opened a mana drain in quite a long time, so it would be nice to see one. Nurturing Pixie. All right, Lazar. Breaches, Breaches, the blast, mass, the blast Maker. This is a tricky card because in Limited, it's kind of hard to do the second ability. It's a good menace, 3-3, three, three, you know, cost 3, but whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you may sack an artifact, and that sack an artifact is the thing that gets you. If you don't have a lot of them, then it's not worth getting. And if you do, you flip a coin. If you win the flip, you copy that spell, and you may choose new targets for the copy. But if you lose the flip, then it deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target. If you can consistently get to sack that artifact, it's great. Otherwise, not so great. Ooh, another rare. Vraska joins up legendary enchantment and when it enters battlefield put a death touch counter on each creature you control and whenever a legendary creature you control deals combat damage to a player you draw a card first part is really really good second part if you have a lot of legendaries can be still good then we have essence capture okay counter attack a spell and put a plus one plus one then we have earth joke frontier mentor as a two four core advisor okay and then oh and a, uh, our braided bluffs and a token our card okie dokie and this is the last booster that we have for this unboxing. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing because we sure as hell did. This was fun. It's always great to unbox a new set. Always great to dive into a new set and to find all these wonderful cards together. So first rare is Archmage's Newt. 2-2 two, two Salamander Mount costs 2. Whatever deals come and damage to a player, tag an instant sorcery card from Graveyard. Gains flashback until the end of turn. That is insanely strong. It does settle for 3, but that is insanely strong. Flashback costs is equal to the mana cost and the card gains flashback zero until the end of turn if instead it's saddled wow that is insane insane strong Ooh, turpor orb oh, of course it's an artifact cost two generic creatures entering battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger so that is really really cool then we have styron scorn again area lullaby a sour springs and a clue token so what should we say about this set and about this box it's been interesting i really love this set there are so many variations and versions of cards and so many subsets that you're just gonna have every single game it's gonna be so much different than any other game that you'll have with any other set it reminds me of the lost covers of excellent in the quantity i think it has the same amount of quantity of subsets that you can get out of these cards and definitely if you want to collect it would be good to get a couple of these boxes to get your collection started because there are so so many the big score i think there are well, i don't remember how many was it like 35 cards or something like that and then you have the breaking news cards it's, it's just an insane amount um we got lucky we saw some really cool cards and um, we didn't see the the biggest hits on the set but that's not why we're opening it we open it because we love it we hope you've enjoyed it if we said something that you don't agree with or if you like to comment just leave a comment down below in the comments we read and reply to every single one of them and um, from scar and i we wish you a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next one bye